Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So Donald Trump Jr. gets his hand caught in the political cookie jar. Um, in a, long story short, elements within the Russian government was willing to give him information that they believe was damaging Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump Jr. enthusiastically <laughs> took that meeting, willing to take that information ultimately finding or from his perspective saying yeah it was nothing it was nothing they didn't give us anything of legitimate value now the key point that i need to make here is this is not russian hacking i don't know how many i want to say it 30 times this is not russian hacking the russian hacking narrative that they concocted that they've been going with for the past six months was that the democratic party or that russia hacked the Democratic Party and Podesta and released that information. Information that was true and released it to the wider public. Now, under their narrative that the public looked at this and was so aghast by it, they were just completely, they didn't know what to do. They were dispirited by this true information that either they didn't vote or they voted for Donald Trump. Now, here's the thing. The evidence that Russia did that was sketchy at best, and yet that's what they ran with. Now, Democrats ran with it because it's easier to scream Russia than the actual than to have the actual conversation about why you lost 15 million people, why people despise your particular party, why you continue to lose all throughout the nation, why you've lost a thousand seats, how you lost the House, the Senate, the presidency. How do you lose to this level? Why do you lose to this level? That's the conversation that you should be having. That is not the conversation you want to have. The easier conversation to have that can unite each and every Democrat is Russia hacked us. Russia hacked us. We just want to talk about Russia. We don't want to talk about anything else. We just want to talk about Russia. So that's what they've gone with. So in one sense, it's two things. Scream Russia at the top of the lungs so they don't necessarily have to honestly engage the cheating that took place in the primaries and they don't have to honestly engage the issues associated with their party. And B, it ties Donald Trump's hands. So you have this effect of Donald Trump is politically constrained based upon the conversation that goes on in Washington. It takes all the other air out the room. We're essentially going to talk about Russia and only Russia. We're even going to get a special prosecutor to look into you dealing with this whole Russia investigation. No, we don't have anything linking Donald Trump to Russia in this case. No, I'd argue we haven't even directly investigated the FBI servers to say that it was Russia in the first place. It, it, I'm just saying this is sketchy at best. But this is different. This is somebody in the Trump administration willing to accept information from a foreign government to attack his political opponent. I'm going to read through this because some of this is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, some of this is interesting. And I would even argue some of this goes against the whole Russian hacking narrative in the first place. So this is from The Guardian. Donald Trump Jr. has been forced to release damning emails that reveal he eagerly embraced what he was told was a Russian government attempt to damage Hillary Clinton's election campaign. The stunning disclosure raised questions over whether campaign laws were broken and why senior Trump associates failed to report a hostile act by a foreign government. That's not a hostile act by a foreign government. I'm sorry, it's not. It's not. Your language here is massively overblown. A hostile act by a foreign government is destroying Libya. It's demolishing Iraq. It's bombing Somalia. That's what a hostile act by a foreign government is. It's starving Yemenis. It's bombing and killing Yemenis. That's a hostile act by a foreign government. This is a government releasing information to get somebody who's more favorable to their interests. All governments do that. I'm sorry. The Guardian can't have this comic book vision of the world in regards to how politics, politicians behave. I don't like the Trump administration at all. I would just be somewhat of a hypocrite if I looked at this and said, pretended like Donald Trump doing this is somehow different than other presidents would do it or different than other candidates or campaigns would do it. Are you telling me if Hillary Clinton was somehow given information that would have been damaging to the Trump campaign, that Hillary Clinton would have said, no, I don't want that information. 
I don't want that information. I am against Donald Trump, but for the most part, he's still an American, and I'm going to function in this campaign with the highest ideals of America. No, she would have taken that information, and she would have tried to release it against him, too. Let's be honest. The difference is he got caught. That's the difference. But calling it hostile is insane. Calling it hostile is insane. Trump Jr. also admitted on Tuesday night that he could have handled the situation better, but he had not told his father about the meeting, a Russian lawyer, because it was, quote, unquote, a nothing. Now, that part is interesting. He has a vested interest in saying, no, I didn't tell my dad, because he doesn't want his dad implicated in this. If anything, if there's any political fallout, he wants that fallout to begin and end with him. That's the first part. So, yes, he has a vested interest in saying, I didn't tell Papa Trump. That being said, it's possible that he didn't tell Trump. It's possible that he went, took that meeting on his own, trying to figure out what it was before bringing in Trump. There's no way to know. Either way. Either way you look at it is just an issue of belief. Um, but there's no way to know. Uh, now, uh, yeah, let's keep going. The email show music. Music promoter Rob Goldstone telling the future United States president's son that the Crown Prosecutor of Russia had offered to provide the Trump campaign with some official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary Clinton and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. Now, we need to understand here what's taking place. There are emails showing Rob Goldstone saying, hey, we have official Russian documents that can hurt Hillary Clinton. 17 minutes later, Trump Jr. welcomes this with the reply, if it's what you say, I love it, especially later in the summer. He's like, hey, if that information is as bad as you say it is, oh, yes, I love it. And by the way, can you send it towards the end of the summer? Because that's when it can hurt her the worst. Now. Trump Jr. agrees, adding he would probably be accompanied by Paul Manafort, my brother-in-law, Jared Kushner. The formatting of the email suggests that Trump Jr. forwarded the whole email chain to Manafort and Kushner before the meeting. The three attended um, at Trump's New York office in July 9th. Now, this is international politics. And you must understand the context. From... Russia's standpoint, and just like any nation, all nations look out and say, what are the situations that are most favorable to me around the globe? And how can I influence other governments to get those situations favorable to me? How they do that, I would is up to them. I'm just making the point of all the ways to do that. Passing somebody information seems to be the most tepid and certainly not a quote unquote hostile act in the terms that they're using for it. Russia is looking at, looks at this and says, you have one person who's being conciliatory towards us, doesn't want a war, doesn't want heightened hostilities. For the most part, he wants to work with us. And look, there may even be business ties that, ex you know, that prior to all of this, one person wants to be conciliatory. The other person wants to start a nuclear war, or at the very least the policies that she would espouse would likely start a war. So that's what you you got. And they say, how can we influence it so it's the former and not the latter? Their conception is, we're going to release information to somebody in the campaign, and that person can release it to the public. The interesting part to this is, the information that they gave him was essentially on like campaign finance laws. Essentially, Hillary Clinton took money from people she wasn't supposed to take money from legally. He looked at this like, this is a nothing. This is nothing. I can't do anything with this. I thought you guys had actually damaging information. You guys just have run of the mill corruption. Do you honestly believe that the United States go after corruption, particularly in campaign laws? Now, Russia had this comic book vision of America in the sense of, hey, if we give them information saying that this particular person did something that's against the law, well, that would be enough to sink their campaign. Um, Donald Trump Jr. looks at this and says, you understand that the Clinton Foundation is a slush fund. He's not saying this, I'm saying this. The Clinton Foundation is a slush fund. 
The association between Clinton and shady dealings, business dealings in particular, is already known. Yes, in a normal world where campaign laws, corruption laws, all those things mattered, the information you gave us would be damaging. Not now, kleptocracy. No, it's not enough. So the most that these emails show was a willingness for him to say, I am okay taking information from a foreign government to damage the person. From a political standpoint, though, this is going to get conflated with the email hacking thing. I guarantee you it is. Okay, I can't guarantee you it is. I'm, I'm inclined to believe it will. Because the narrative of the Russian hacking thing, there's no there there to it. This, however, at the very least, has a there in the sense of the person being willing to work with the Russian government. Half of the narrative of the Russian hacking is found out. So, two elements in the Russian hacking thing. The Russian government hacked the DNC and that Trump in some way colluded with that Russian hacking. In this particular case, you have somebody in the Trump campaign willing to collude with Russia in order to get information to attack Hillary Clinton. I just said, I, I know the words they're using are somewhat hyperbolic. I had to be honest, this doesn't get me out of bed in the morning. I assume the government's acting in this way anyway. The United States has been eavesdropping on governments all across the planet. It's a little laughable that we're getting up in arms about somebody leaking information and say, hey, use this information to attack that particular person. I'm sorry, it's somewhat laughable that we're looking at this as a quote unquote hostile act. We do bad shit around the globe. We do very bad shit around the globe. This is tepid at best. Um, and mind you, is the information true? Is the information true? I just have this, look, I have to believe that the people who wrote this article and the people who are involved in this, they have to know that this is the way international governments behave or governments behave internationally. If they know that, then this is something that they can just make hay out of as something else to keep them from talking about actual issues. Again, we don't want to talk about healthcare. We don't want to talk about education. We don't want to talk about the problems in our particular country. It's easier to talk about Russia. And for the, the length of time, we can tie Trump's hands up. We're going to tie Trump's hands up. I don't know if he broke any laws on this. And if he did, yes, you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. You're going to have to pay the consequences. The interesting question becomes, are the Democrats going to try to tie the willingness of somebody in the Trump campaign to work with Russia with Trump himself? That's going to be, I mean, that's essentially what we're, what we're talking about. And again, I, I think all this is political fodder. And I don't necessarily think it's the safest of political father, fodder. You have a country that doesn't regard itself honestly, meaning the things that we do around the globe, we don't look at those things in the way that those particular actions adversely affect people all across the globe. We don't look at destroying Iraq as toppling a government, if that makes sense. Like we look at these things as well. America did it by virtue of us doing it. We had the good intentions or the right reasons for doing it. This people in this particular country are almost primed to not look at the world in those honest terms. What I'm getting at is, even though this is just the way governments behave, that it is laughable that the United States is calling this a hostile act and all this other stuff. The American citizenry may not necessarily see it that way. They may look at this stuff with these pristine glasses as if the United States has never done this to anybody else. Why are they doing this to us? That's my issue with the story. This is my issue with the way the story is written. Whatever takes place with regards to Donald Trump Jr., whatever, I don't care in particular. Um, it looks very bad willing to take information to attack your candidate. Does that tie to Trump? Who knows? Are the Democrats going to continue to to bite this bone in a sense? Yes, because they don't have anything else. And the moment that the hacking thing falls away, they need something else to pivot to. This gives them something else to pivot to. Yeah, this gives them something else to pivot to. Why do we go to 90 Iraq? Why did we go into Iraq? Think about the stories that came up when we were talking about that. Well, they attacked us on 9-11. Well, 
Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. Well, we're going there to liberate the Iraqis. As each story kind of fell apart, they jumped to the next branch to salvage that particular narrative. Or salvage a narrative that would allow that particular action to not be seen in the ghastly terms in which it should be seen. I'm saying the Russian hacking thing. There's no there there. There's no there there. The story doesn't even necessarily make sense. But that's the story they ran with. Thus, at the very least, there's an email trail associated with it. So yes, I, I would imagine that Democrats are also going to bite into this. Instead of actually talking about issues that deal with people in their real world. So, I'll leave it at that. Um, and like I said before, I have a hard time believing that Hillary Clinton would have looked at that information and said, no, I'm not going to do that. I care about Donald Trump as an American and I'm going to be fair and honest in this particular contest and I'm not going to release information from the Russian government or any other governmental source. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Hillary Clinton would have leaked that information in the same way. I think she would have been more clandestine. No, I can't even say that because her emails got hacked or the very least Podesta's emails got hacked. Yeah, I can't even say that. I can't even say she would have been more clandestine. I have a hard time believing she wouldn't have taken that information and tried to use that information in the same way that Donald Trump's campaign tried to use it. So, yes, it's a big deal. I'd imagine at some point it's a big deal. Yes, it's also casually true that it happens all the time. No, it's not a hostile act. No governments have been destroyed or obliterated um, in some kind of military intervention that toppled a government. It's not a hostile act, particularly not in comparison to other acts that are actually hostile to other governments. But yeah, despite it being so casual, it does look a little weird that one campaign was willing to say it, or at the very least it looks bad. So I'll leave it at that. Alright guys, if you enjoy the content, feel free to share, write, subscribe. You can always support the work through PayPal or Patreon. Thank you.